Howdy of you delicious people, I'm here today to review The Suicide Squad. So, going into this movie, uh, I would honestly say that for, like, how I felt about the very first original Suicide Squad movie, where I'm like, man, like, what a great, like, probably one of, a real great, like, DC films, and like how I had such high praise of that and how like it seems like they really went through and told and give you like a really good uh, origin story of each one of the characters and how like it felt like there was a lot of time well spent in that movie. This movie is just like, hey man, like all we care about is basically how many characters we can just have in this film and we could just really just like not give a crap about story. Uh, really that kind of feels obvious where it's just like, we have two hours of really just action sequences. And we also just have like a clickbaiting villain almost to where like, I'm like, what was the point of having like Starro even in this film for two hours? Because that's really what it feels like. It feels like we get a solid maybe 20 minutes of Starro. Like that isn't like just consistently reused package. Uh, like stuff showcasing this villain uh, repetitiously. Just looping the same footage over and over again. Like hey Starro was in this film I guess. Uh, but real solid 20 minutes of Starro in this movie. As a villain that is just to be like... Oh, wow. Um, man, I, like, I could have, like, would have loved to see the Justice League handle this thing. Because, like, what an obscure way to just have any of these characters eventually take this thing out. Uh, so, without a doubt, going in here, you have a lot of characters that are like, Hey, man, I'm coming into this movie just because of this actor. Well, hopefully you don't, because you don't know how long that that actor or actress is even going to be in this movie for. So, like, I just wouldn't go out of my way to learn anything about any number of these characters. Uh, unless you just, like, just, like, really you're not going to get anything from these characters as an origin thing. I would go into Comics Explained and have every single character explained to you, which whatever one that you liked uh because you're gonna probably need it uh really these characters are just like like it feels like they're only selling one thing in this movie and that is to be a uh, a sequel to something else uh so really we have really just john cena i think uh being the most interesting character in this movie because he forcibly has to be because they're making a peacemaker show after this movie is to be done uh, and there's obviously an Ed credit scene of that that is to basically just, like, show that this character... I, I don't think that that's a spoiler, that there was, like, a releasing of a Peacemaker show before, like, this movie was even to go out. So, uh, yeah, like, so we go from, like, Suicide Squad, was which was the greatest movie, like, a really great DC film... To all of a sudden now just having something watchable. Like, <laughs> it's just like, hey, go ahead and watch this. And you'll just be baffled and confused like I was during this whole two-hour adventure. Just be like, what is even this film? Like, I, like, it kind of feels like this went into the way of, like, Doom Patrol. Where I was like, you know what? I was won over by season one of Doom Patrol. And then season two was just like, what the f is this? Like, what the f is this? Like... It just feels like they just chucked this out there and they just kind of just said like, hey, like, you know what? Like, it's Suicide Squad. Everybody knows what the premise is. And like, we were just going to like put little slivers of backstory him here and there. But the only reason why we're going to have slivers of backstory is because some characters are going to be important in story than others. Uh, but even that, like, they don't put the freaking effort into any part of this like origin story like compared to the first people where like man did those other people have some real true time in the sun where they had their own like freaking like their own little scenes and their own little story and their own little whatever 
Like, we just have this, like, reference of just, like, Idris telling us, like, oh, yeah, like, I just have this one fear. And so here's this tiny bit of story that is never going to go into an actual scene. And, like, we have, like, rat catcher that it's, that's built up in this movie for some reason. So, uh... Rat Catcher Two, not Rat Catcher One. You gotta, you gotta really tell the difference between that. Uh, but yeah, so the big thing about this is basically two hours of just action sequences, and really just like two hours of the Suicide Squad basically fighting these military people, whether they're to be like uh, guerrilla warfare ash like people. Or just, like, some military force throughout this movie. Who freaking knows? Bizarrely, they have to go to some weird, bizarre uh, Norse mythology building called the Jotunheim. But that is to not exactly be, like, the the 100% thing that they need to eventually go into. Because eventually there's also this, like, dome or temple of something that they also have to go to because... Uh, story and but also like to eventually unleash uh the villain of this story at some point in this film because like really i'm kind of teeing it up a heavy amount here just because i just i hated this movie i was severely disappointed uh like i was just like man free guy i think is gonna be a real fun and good film but i was just like but maybe there's hope for this one like, maybe this is going to be a fun movie. Maybe I'm going to like it. Maybe I'm going to enjoy it. And then I just went through this. I'm like, God, did they just phone this in? Like, man, did they just chuck this out there? And I was just like, I thank God that they didn't, like, like call this, like, Suicide Squad 2. And really just say that they, like, really tied into the... Because it didn't feel like that. It felt like its own thing. Like, it just felt like... Hey, man, we're just doing whatever. Like, ah, who cares? Like, if anything, I was desperately just thinking, like, man, if they could just have certain characters in the next movie, like a Lobo or, like, something that actually people could give a rip about, uh, like, that would actually be great. Because, <laughs> like, even the people that we were kind of curious, oh, who's this guy supposed to be? It's not going to matter long enough. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, let me... Uh, oh, my God. I. Uh, so, let's get into spoilers about this film, because I've already kind of teed it up. Uh, really? Uh, yeah, let's, let's just go into the spoilers of this movie. I've teed it up, and I've whatever. It's just... This is an awful film. I was severely disappointed in this. And I was like, man, like they put out a Suicide Squad game and they're putting this out. There must be some faith finally in Warner Brothers about this whole thing. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Like, no, like this, this must just be like, we really have to make a push because like Harley Quinn is in this movie. And like, and so... Like, that's the only reason why we're selling this thing is because we just need something to put out. Like, we need some product to put out. So, without a doubt, let's go into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that time we can just spoil this movie. So, the very beginning of this movie is we are to have uh, Michael Rooker as a character called Savant, who is to just be uh, kind of bouncing this ball against this wall and then all of a sudden he ends up seeing this bird and so he bounces this ball against these walls so hard that this ball is to kill this bird and bounce back into Michael Rooker's hand where he is to like wipe off the blood from the ball. So Amanda Waller's like, come on in, Savant, like, come on in, like, we're, we're going to need you for a task. And so... Savan is just be like, hey, like, uh, if anything, like, uh, like, I kind of wish that I wouldn't be called like anything whatsoever. So as far as like names goes, like, who cares what you guys call me, but like, I just don't want to be called at all. So that leads to have Savant eventually get to uh, 
be chucked into this helicopter and because eventually like Rick Flagg goes and meets Savant and then just kind of like in a half a attempt uh just like tells us like oh yeah that's Mongol oh that's the uh that's uh TDK the disconjointed kid or whatever like he like whatever like Nathan Fillion like he's in this movie I guess so like uh like blackguard which what whatever he is like what uh, we don't even need a backstory for that guy uh <laughs> like we have uh of course harley quinn you saw in the first movie you know what all she does mongol who is just to be some woman that was to be uh from this like war world that like doesn't need any introduction it's just like what she's just here uh, like we had the weasel that people like confused to be a werewolf. And then like Rick flag had to tell him, Oh, he's, he's, he's like a weasel. Like, you know, like it, he's great. Like everybody will love him. He'll be the mascot of this team. I'm sure for a very long time. Uh, we get this little cameo of calendar man as Sean Gunn is to play the calendar man in one of these spots in this movie, which is great. Uh, so that just pushes us on to just have Rick Flag just going on and it's like, okay, we're just gonna, we're just gonna uh, go out and we're gonna just do this mission. Like, F it. Like, we have Captain Boomerang that's back from the other movie. And so we end up finding out that the reason why Harley Quinn had gone and back, had gone back in prison because of some road rage in incident I guess, like, that is to kind of have some, like, tying in, quite possibly, from the Birds of Prey movie, but who knows, because really anything to do with Harley Quinn in this movie is just the saddest effing thing, and I wish that she didn't exist in this movie whatsoever, because the stuff that they have her doing in this, in this movie, and I feel like there's obviously, like, is, uh, uh, is actually, like, is Margaret Margaret Robbie is she busy like is like like it feels like every bit of what like they had her do in this film kind of felt like she had to be like separated from the rest of the group and had her own little story like what the f was that like d was was Robbie doing another movie and like she couldn't have bothered be doing this was she doing like birds of prey too while she was doing this movie like not to be insulting i'm just trying to figure out like why did this person have to be so separate from everyone else like as if like hey like we have to pay her more money so we have to justify she has some kind of story in here so uh so we drop these guys off after we don't even really explain who they actually are and so they drop them into this water and all of a sudden we end up having Weasel who gets like freaking kicked out there and we end up finding out that Weasel, Weasel can't swim and so he's just drowning and so like Weasel is to just be dead and Michael Rooker who is Savant is grabbing Weasel and pulling him out of the water and trying to do CPR but Savant is like dude this guy's dead it's like Wow, like another one of these kind of like this fe this movie feels like Deadpool 2 where we're just to have like characters that have no real significance in this movie. But it's great for a reason. Uh so oh, I forgot about Javelin cuz he's vital to this movie. Like basically without this character, this movie doesn't even exist, right? So so Javelin is also in the in the in this team and so we have Rick Flag who's just like trying to like figure out where this uh military force that they are going to have to forcibly fight in this spot is and this guerrilla force and so all of a sudden we have Blackguard who is to have been the the blonde haired guy that you're seeing in the like way back here uh is to all of a sudden have been a snitch 
against this suicide squad and it's like hey man like hey like we're friends remember i told you guys the suicide squad was coming and like so hey man like don't kill me i'm friend and so all of a sudden we just have this military force who ends up just shooting blackguard in the face and killing him like man what a lot of screen time this guy had but i'm sure the check probably felt pretty good so uh, what ends up happening is we end up finding that Nathan Fillion is to just have his hands just magically pull apart from his body and then all of a sudden just go and just float into the air and just pull a, like, a Three Stooges maneuver on all these military forces, like, 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 grabbing their nose or bumping them on the head or smacking them around and that's this guy's power, and that's legitimately all that this guy really brings to the table. Savan is to just hide out, and then he's realizing, dude, I'm not going to die for this. And so Savan goes and starts swimming in the water, and so Amanda is like, dude, we're going to just pull the trigger on this guy. He's going to die. And so his head explodes, and Savan is dead. So I'm like, man a lot of bills being tossed around here so uh we have captain boomerang who's like of course using his boomerang taking some people down and so we have mongo all of a sudden there's like a helicopter that is to come to the fray of this and so mongo or mongal is to take this like helicopter down and like cause an explosion and start like wiping off some of these these guards but eventually she ends up like dying in the process also. So I'm like, wow. Like, and we just have like Javelin who's just kind of there to just like also like protect himself and then eventually gets shot up. And then he ends up handing off his Javelin to Harley Quinn of all people. Cause it's like, I think that this, like this deserves to go to you. And we have like Harley Quinn who's talking to Javelin while they're in the helicopter together, like talking about his accent and how it just seems so amazing, and how, like, uh, a lot of American girls don't have much of accents, so they desperately just love men who have accents, of course. I'm like, yeah, that's technically true. Like, a lot of American women just love guys with accents. Like, the guy could be, like, the shortest man alive, and but, man, does he have an accent. Like, all of a sudden, all of a sudden the women are, like, flocking him. Like, even if there's a guy standing next to him, that has, like, a giant arm of a cannon and, like, freaking, like, eight foot tall and just, like, just, like, built of muscle. It's like, but you don't have an accent. Like, well, I'll freaking get one. <laughs> like, I'll freaking get one. You believe me. I'll freak, I'll get, I'll get me a freaking accent. It'll happen. Anyways, so... <laughs> So, like, all these people are just to be wasted and killed off with the exclusion of Rick Flagg, who ends up just getting taken by this guerrilla force, and Harley Quinn just runs off on her own. Uh, so, we're like, okay, so what is the point of all this? We are to find out that this Suicide Squad that was to be shot out was just to be a decoy, and there was actually a second Task Force X that was actually supposed to legitimately do this mission. And that was actually Bloodsport, who is Idris Alba's character in this movie. King Shark, uh, Polka Dot Man, uh, Ratcatcher 2, which she'll have a promising role in this movie, believe me. And so, uh, what, what else is there? Oh, like Peacemaker, of course, with John Cena who probably is, like, has probably the best role in this movie just because he has to, because they're selling something down the line with him in the future, if I haven't said that already. Uh, but yeah, so, like, John Cena, thumbs up. Da, 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 yeah. Because his name is John Cena. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, so now we have to showcase the origin story of all these characters who eventually, like, had to be shoved together for the most point. So 
we showcase that Bloodsport is to eventually have a, a daughter. Uh, this doesn't feel like a copy and paste of Deadshot whatsoever in this film. No, 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 no siree. Was Deadshot supposed to be in this movie? Because Idris and Bloodsport, Deadshot, carbon copies. So, uh, Bloodsport is to eventually talk to his daughter, and supposedly his daughter is going to go to jail soon. And so Bloodsport is telling his daughter, like, how exactly she, like, uh, like, should have done the crime that she did. Like, she should have had, like, a, like, a, a lookout for her, uh, so that way she could be able to get, get and do the crime and not have to do the time. So, it seems like we're teetering on the fact that Tyla, or Tila, Tyla? could eventually go to prison and go into the worst possible prison and could get killed unless uh, Bloodsport goes on to do this job for Amanda Waller and then I guess they'll just kind of wipe this girl's slate clean. And so Bloodsport is like, well, like, I guess I need to forcibly do this job because Bloodsport was just like, I am not interested. I'm going to go and scrape gum and like and just do that till my prison sentence is over but like amanda waller is just like dude i'm gonna dangle your daughter over you so like sucks to be you so blood sport goes and does this and so blood sport and now that he's tied to this now he has to learn who his team is where we end up finding out like polka dot man is just this loony character uh, that was to be mixed up with his family that was to get this uh, like outer space infection or viral like like virus thing like inside of them and so I guess this is the only real guy out of this family that survived and so polka dot man for every single person he used to see in his life Every single person is to be his mother. No matter, like, no matter who they are, like, no matter if it's a guy, girl, whatever, you're going to just see this one woman who's, like, 30 different people that is, like, filled throughout this entire, like, scene at points in this movie. I'm just like, this is just, like, this is just the, the stupidest thing to do, but, like... These people just have CGI money, I guess, to just throw around. We even have a point where, like, Polka Dot's, like, mother is Starro. But eventually Starro is to make his way CGI-wise through this film. And I'm like, action sequence, baby. Action sequence. Uh, King Shark is just a buffoon of a character that I'm like, why do they have Stallone just be in... Why, why is Stallone doing the voice of this because obviously he's not the onset king shark like i maybe it was fun for him but i'm just like like and there were some fun spots here and there where we were see like uh like rat catcher being like almost consumed by king shark while people were dozing off and so i guess that was like a one shot fun part that i saw king shark go into but it seems like King Shark is like confused about like who he should just eat and consume and whatever to where eventually he has to be like told kind of like Hulk, like when to smash people or in this term, when to eat people, when to not eat people. So uh, pushing on. So uh, we have blood sport that is to be told that he is to be like put into this beach to eventually make his way to wipe out certain people, uh, uh, aka uh, certain guys who are connected to the uh, like the head regime of this place, this country that they're going into. Uh, the uh, Presidente General Silo Luna or Silvio Luna, 
and a guy named uh, that that's codenamed Thinker that you're gonna kind of see like right here. Uh, but like he looks a little bit better in the movie, in all honesty. Uh, there's also Mayor General uh, Matteo. Yeah, let's just like let's scoop through that. So. Uh, really, we're mostly to see, like, Starro later on in this movie, and then, like, we just see this repetitious clip that we keep seeing consistently in this film of Starro when we are to actually see him. How, like, Starro, like, came from space, and then the astronauts from the United States, like, grabbed this thing up, and... And then, like, the astronauts went and got controlled by Starro... And so eventually that pushed uh, the astronauts to make it back onto planet Earth to eventually make it to this this place that they are keeping Star Starro, which is to be some temple or dome or whatever to kind of keep him housed, but also keep all the people that they forced to go into this dome or this temple uh, to have be controlled and tortured and taken apart. Uh, but also controlled by Starro, uh, cause this thinker is just trying to figure out how he can like try to manipulate Starro to work for him or just be able to do whatever. Anyway, so, uh, where were we? So, uh, so that like what ends up happening is, uh, Ratcatcher 2 we end up finding out that her father had died, uh, like he had just had a heart attack and whoop de doo Like we had, uh, like Ratcatcher one, who of course was uh, Taiko I, uh, to Taiko I T, the director of uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. I'm gonna ill pronounce his name right now, so I'm just gonna call him Ratcatcher one. I'm 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 probably ill pronounce the name. I apologize. Anyways, so. But anyways, uh, Harley Quinn makes her way uh, with this whole group. Uh, like, Peacemaker is just to be, like, a guy who's the carbon copy of Bloodsport. Like, he basically is pretty accurate with, uh, with guns and stuff, like Bloodsport is. But supposedly, Peacemaker is to say, like, well, yeah, I am kind of like a copy of you, but I'm just a little bit better. Like, oh. Okay, so, so, like, we just, like, it's basically, like, the Deadshot and Captain Boomerang thing all over again, where, like, but we also have both, both Bloodsport and, uh, and, uh, Peacemaker kind of doing this one-upsmanship thing that I think a lot of people will probably say that they enjoy during this film, uh, so... Uh, what eventually ends up happening is that uh, this group is to just go on and try to do their mission, but then they end up having to forcibly uh, take some detours just because uh, Rick Flagg had been uh, forcibly been taken by this guerrilla force, and so that is to push... Uh, that is to push the Suicide Squad to go and rescue Flag, uh, because that is their big, um, that is their big mission in this, um, this movie, and I'm trying to, like, find the name of the woman who is the, the main guerrilla leader, but I just really just don't think it matters. Um, <laughs> sadly enough, uh, like anybody else in this movie just doesn't quite matter. Uh, anyways, push, we'll just push on. So, uh, so we have both, uh, Peacemaker and Bloodspot who are basically wiping all of these, uh, like, guerrilla forces out and then finally making their way to Flag. And then Flag is like, hey guys, like, if anything, me and this girl, like, teamed up together and so, like... What happened to all the other guys? Like, if anything, they probably should have just let you through, right? Because, like, we're working together. And so they're like, oh, yeah, about that. <laughs> like, we just killed everybody. And so and so they're just like, ah, whatever. Like, we'll figure it out. <laughs> like, who cares? So, uh, 
eventually what ends up going on to happen is uh, eventually we have Harley Quinn who is to kind of go on her own and eventually get captured uh, by the uh, the Presidente's uh, force because we end up finding out that the Presidente has his people, uh, the Presidente General, is to want Harley Quinn because his town wants him and her to get married and be a couple for whatever reason. And so what ends up happening is Harley Quinn ends up getting, like, grabbed. And then she ends up getting, like, this, uh, like, limo and, like, up to the nines treatment where she gets this fancy dress to wear. And she goes into uh, this, like, mansion of a home to eventually have... Uh, Eventually, the Presidente talking about Jodenheim and how he sent thousands of people, kids, women, and children, to all go there and just die uh, just to be experimented on and whatever. And how, like, this guy has been ruling this place with, like, an iron fist and all kinds of stuff. And so... And so we have... Like... Harley Quinn, who ends up going after seemingly like almost falling in love with this man, almost having like a uh, an SEX moment together, she ends up going and just shooting the man and killing him because she's like, you know what? Like I've had some horrible relationships before that like I kind of ignored a lot of red flags, but if anything, like what you're talking about is just like. Mass murder, and I don't think that I can be involved in something like that. And so we take all this time in a slow motion sequence and everything to build up this stupid relationship just for Harley Quinn to kill this guy off because they just needed time to just waste in this film. They couldn't give you origin stories of any of the characters during that time. No, they just had Harley who had her own little story, but I don't understand why they even did that. So... Harley Quinn is to just, like, blast her way through a lot of these military forces because she has the javelin and, and guns and everything like that to just take everybody down as she's choreographing her way, obviously, through all bits and pieces of this stuff. So, what eventually happens is when these guys are to decide that they're going to go and try to go into Jotunheim... They all of a sudden have to scratch that mission because they have to go and rescue Harley Quinn instead. So, uh, but also they like collected the thinker on their way to get to Harley. Because what ends up happening is that the uh, the Suicide Squad go in uh, like as civilians to go into a bar to find this thinker character. Uh, who is to have all these weird, bizarre things, like, attached to his head for whatever reason that this story is to, like, I guess this guy is to, like, try to increase his IQ or, I don't know, this is, I don't get the, the thinker character, I don't understand him, and it's just a person that is eventually just gonna end up dead. Uh, so, like, to me, honestly. So, uh... We we eventually have all these characters kind of loosening up. Like, Rick Flagg is just like, hey, man, like, like how about we get some beers in us? And, like, and, uh, and Peacemaker is like, yeah, let's definitely get a lot of beers in us. And Bloodsport is like, I'm only taking one. And so they're, like, pushing him on to eventually get drunk and eventually... Uh, and so eventually Bloodsport eventually does get drunk. And so, eventually what ends up happening as these guys are to head on to uh, go and get some bed rest for the night is we start to hear some um, horror stories because evidently we have to understand why 
Bloodsport is afraid of rats because he's tied with with rat catcher. And so Bloodsport mentions that supposedly when he was really young, he was to be tossed in a room with a, just a bunch of dead rats. And so that's what traumatized him to ever like see a rat again just traumatizes him from that moment. And so rat catcher is to mention about her father who like, it seems like she had had a homeless life with him, but it seems like they had some device together that is to control these rats. And so eventually her father ended up keeling over. And so like we had that whole story about that for whatever reason. Uh, to just give this girl, like, a more importance about this movie. So, but also we can kind of start to see, like, the level of eventually what this girl will bring to the table. So, uh, so, uh, so now we have to rescue Harley Quinn. And so what ends up happening is basically Harley Quinn, like, rescues herself uh, by the time the guys are to actually go and get any part of their outfits on, like, John Cena is to just toss on this, like, Peacemaker helmet because he's wearing, like, a polo and shorts. And so, uh, like, Bloodsport is to just chuck on his, like, helmet and just, like, have this, like, Gatling, uh, like, Gatling gun out of his arm to just try to, like, uh, scale this building and so we're like, these guys are kind of like coming in this building like half cocked because they're like, yeah, we're going to just go and bust through here and just rescue Harley Quinn. Like as if this was like all really very much planned for like these guys to not have to really do this mission. Like it kind of felt, felt very obvious of that. So, but at least I can kind of get behind like the outfit that Harley Quinn is to have in this movie because it looks very much like jesterish to where it kind of feels like they're going back to like the original design of this character. Uh, but eventually I'm sure they'll retcon or change that when eventually they lazily phone in whatever the next project Harley Quinn is to be tied into, or she's going to have an awful outfit probably in that film. Right? So, uh, Harley Quinn just walks out of this building and she's like, Oh, like you guys were trying to rescue me. Well, I'm already rescued. I rescued myself. And they're like, oh, okay, so like, let's just take her and let's go on to eventually going into Jodenheim, where they just go into Jodenheim to uh, eventually just take down the thinker and to get some data about uh, like Starro and that this data is to tell them that the U.S. like had like orchestrated this whole Starro thing. And so what ends up kind of breaking down through that is that Peacemaker is willing to kill anybody to have the world at peace. And so like that's his whole gimmick. So... What ends up happening is Peacemaker is to have his own little side mission. And that is to basically uh, take this data for himself and give it back to Waller and just like, or just destroy it. Uh, so that way it doesn't get out. Because having that information get out will cause a war, or will cause something. And so of course, like the Peacemaker won't have peace. So... Uh, so eventually we have where the Peacemaker is starting to fight out the whole Suicide Squad team for this data or for anybody who knows about, like, this whole situation. And, like, so that leads to, like, whichever Suicide Squad members, like, weren't at this place. So... Like, Peacemaker is having to forcibly fight out Rick Flagg. And I'm like, well, like, Peacemaker obviously isn't going to die in this movie because he's doing a show. So whatever, like, 
John Cena is going to have to, like, he's obviously going to not die through this movie. So, like, whoever he's fighting is obviously going to die. But I'm like, but Rick Flagg was in the other Suicide Squad movie. I'm like, so what are they just going to, like, get just some other random schlub to be in the third one? Like, if they ever do one? Uh... Like, are they just going to say, oh, Rick Flagg is still alive. Like, uh, like, like the Enchantress just brought him back to life because magical power. Because, <laughs> like, if they even remember that Chan Enchantress is still a thing in this. So, uh, or maybe Rick Flagg won't be allowed to die. I don't know. Like, if anything, the first movie, like, supposedly, like, Rick Flagg's, like, heart monitor was to be like keeping the rest of the team alive and so i guess they just kind of next that in this movie because like peacemaker needed to kill a like a bulk of his team we kind of have amanda waller that's kind of a uh a real like pain in the butt in this movie also so uh but anyways so peacemaker is to go and kill off rick flag by stabbing him uh, with just some random, like, sharp piece of something. And so now Rick Flagg is to die. I'm like, oh, no. Like, I guess they're just going to, like, kill probably everybody from the first movie with the exception of Harley Quinn because so that way they can just do whatever the heck in the third film. Uh, if they're not going to do that, then they're probably just going to do whatever they're going to do in the, the Peacemaker thing to just say, hey, they're going to do another one of these for reasons so uh so peacemaker is to eventually go and like uh like try to take out a lot of these uh suicide squad members but eventually uh blood sport like catches wind of peacemaker eventually trying to kill like rat catcher because we just have this spot where, uh, like, blood spore is just falling from these levels of this, uh, of this place that he's in. Because they're basically just destroying this whole building that they're in. They're taking it down, they're wiping it out. And, like, this, like, we just have the, like, a whole, like, side of this building just falling over. And freaking everybody is just, like, good grief. Like, they're all over the place with this one. So, uh, let me pause here just to do a little bit of a reset. All right. So, Bloodsport is falling down these floors to eventually find uh, that Peacemaker is having a gun on Ratcatcher. And Ratcatcher 2. Let's, let's clear that up. So, so garbage. So, uh... Idris is to go and, like, try to take down Peacemaker, but it's, all, like, it's not to kill him, because eventually we'll find at the end credit scene that this guy was still alive, luckily. He was just barely hanging on. So, that leads to eventually forcing this team to make their way to... Like, kind of start having to forcibly fight out uh, a lot of Starro's minions through this. And eventually it gets to where eventually Starro is to eventually get unleashed in all this. Because eventually they are to go to this temple dome building of a thing. And, like, Starro is to be there. And because we have the... Uh, the mayor general who is to mention about the beast and everything like that and how like this thing is going to get unleashed upon this world. So, uh, so Starro is to come out and he is to just be like straight up just Godzilla, like just thrashing through the town and like having no disregard for basically any of the Suicide Squad because basically Starro is just sending out its minions to just kind of like toss upon all of everyone's head. And so Ratcatcher is to figure out, because she is to toss a mask upon her head. 
And so evidently the Starro creatures doesn't like go and latch on to a person who is to have a mask over their head. So Ratcatcher just comes up with the just brilliant idea. Just mask to be class that, that, that that's so stupid. Ratcatcher is just be like, hey man, like just cover up your face. Just just cover up your face. It won't go after you if you like kind of do one of these. Like if you can't see me. Like if you if you do one of these, Starro won't like won't hurt you. Like because it can't just get to you. Man, you know what? If Justice League would have come up with that answer, man, with those with that episode with Starro would have been a lot quicker. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just so stupid. Anyways, so uh, Bloodsport is to eventually like now like tell the team what the heck to do. Because Blood Bloodsport is now like cementing he's the leader now because Rick Flag is dead. So Bloodsport is to tell like uh like King Shark to like start eating and like oh we also had King Shark and I don't why I don't know why this is a, a significant thing. He is to see an aquarium of these like fish that are eventually to be like uh swimming around. But we end up finding out that this is like alien fish and it ends up trying to attack King Shark. But eventually like King Shark, of course, like takes these things down bizarrely. It's stupid uh, as well as just ugh, with this with this movie. But anyways, King Shark is grabbing on to Starro and just eating away. <laughs> so like Bloodsport is now to try to take out Starro with like his biggest like put together like a lego piece kind of like gun where like this weapon is so freaking huge and so like uh like blood sport is trying to take this down with this biggest weapon that he has but like it's just like a little small piddly thing compared to anything else that anybody's to probably have so uh Eventually, what ends up happening is Star Wars minions start to gather around Bloodsport. Now he has to, like, use every single, like, weapon of his arsenal that is taken from off of his costume to eventually just start, like, killing people with that. So, uh, Polka Dot Man is to have to unleash his, uh, Polka Dots anyways because he's supposed to release these Polka Dots twice a day. And he is to have some, like, viral infection or viral thing of illness or whatever that, like, he eventually, like, starts to weld up with these, like, like colors upon his face uh, unless he, like, unleashes this weapon out on the world. And so we have Peacemaker at one point in this movie who is to tell, like, Polka Dot Man, it's like, Hey, like, uh, we're not all gonna get sick like you, are we? And Polka Dot Man is like, no, like, it's, like, it's only to happen to me. So, Polka Dot Man is to see, like, his mother, like, from this Starro character. So, like, Polka Dot Man is to just see a giant, like, thing of his own mother. I'm like, just, like, whatever with this. So, Polka Dot Man is to go and shoot his Polka Dots out to take down the leg of his mother, which is to technically be the leg of Starro. But, like, that just does nothing. <laughs> like, uh, eventually, like, Polka Dot Man is just a bug to get squished. Um, but Ratcatcher is just so much in mourning over the loss of Polka Dot Man. Because, I guess, him and her were kind of having this unspoken thing, I guess. So, uh... <laughs> So as we start seeing, like, uh, like King Shark ends up just getting like tossed aside, uh, eventually when he becomes a nuisance, and so like everybody's kind of failing at their task to take Starro down. Uh, also, the interesting thing was is that uh, like the Suicide Squad didn't actually have to go after Starro; they just had to take down their certain tasks, and then and then after that. Like, Amanda Waller was just like, hey, you don't have to do this task. You don't have to take down Starro. Like, if anything, like, someone else could come in and wipe this thing out. And, like, more likely that might have or should have been probably the Justice League. So, 
Like, the Suicide Squad was going to walk away, and then, like, Bloodsport decides, like, no, I'm going to go on, and I'm going to try to, uh, like, do this mission anyways. And so... Amanda Waller just gets angry and almost wants to detonate all of their all of their bombs in their heads. And so we have like Amanda Waller's minions that go and like knock her out and then just take it upon themselves, to just kind of give them the rundown of what they should all do. So that leads us to have the one last big weapon in their arsenal. And that is to basically call upon every single rat in the city to have every single rat just take and or consume and kill Starro. While also we have Harley Quinn, who ends up finally, when we actually see her javelin, like, and herself being used in this movie, Harley Quinn is just taking this javelin and just shoving it into this Starro's eye. Like, it seems that Harley Quinn is to try to get up to a vantage point to take this thing down, but then all of a sudden a villain... A, a villain. Um, a building ends up coming down on her, and so she has to, like, run away. But then eventually she has to, like, try to find a vantage point to jump into this thing's eye and to poke into it. And then all of a sudden she's, like, swimming in this eye, weirdly. And... So Harley Quinn taking this one weakness of Starro out, but then also like we have the rats that are just coming in and just eating this thing up to eventually just wipe out Starro. And I'm just like, this is the goofiest part of this movie. And so if that's not bad enough, Bloodsport is to mention that the video of... Uh, of Starro with like US things on it uh, from outer space is to be on some server and that Amanda Waller cannot touch this information anymore and so Bloodsport is saying like hey any of the things you have on us like uh like, do not try to, like, uh, severe our sentences or do not put my uh, daughter in jail or we're going to, like, blackmail you with this to, like, basically just even everything out. Like, to have this video just not exist. But we'll still have it out there to just, like, maybe pull something on. on yeah. So, uh, so Amanda Waller is like, okay, we'll collect all you guys and we'll have you guys just... Like, make your way back uh, to prison to spend the rest of your sentence out. Because it's only, like, ten years off of whatever sentence that they have. But, uh... It seems that... Uh... Like, I think there were some spots here and there that were to have some significance of what... Like, any of these people were to have done after this, I think, like, uh, Blood Sports, like, uh, Blood Sport is beyond TV, which is to all of a sudden have his daughter going, like, wow, like, he's a hero. Like, he actually, like, protected those people. Like, I don't know what the heck he all did, but, like, man, he's on the news and, like, he saves people? That seems odd. <laughs> like, so, like... I guess, like, Bloodsport's, like, daughter is just going to be more kind to Bloodsport, I guess, in the near future. So, yeah, like, all these people are, like, kind of seen in a different light as if they're heroes and whatever. I'm sure, like, if Harley Quinn does another movie after this, like, they'll probably have to just refer to this, but probably won't do much of else other than that. But, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think I kind of covered, like, most of this movie, but, like, it was just... a bizarre movie that I just like I'm just like good great that this movie is over um like the hodgepodge of all this stuff and how all this thing had to be broken down I'm like man like looking at it it's like uh like a freaking like we had so many setups for all of these characters and like in the first thing like we had the flash 
we had Cyborg, we had Batfleck, we had, like, 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 the only thing that, like, Bloodsport had a reference of taking down Superman, but what does that mean? That meant a lick of nothing, uh, as well as any other reference that they used in here, which meant nothing. So, all these characters are to go onto this, this plane or jet or whichever, and so at the end of this, we have everybody just kind of like finally relaxing because they're like, good God, I'm exhausted. And so Bloodsport is to finally touch this rat and just to like finally be able to like, uh, like work on his fear. And so we'll see what happens with the sequel of this movie, if there ever is one or whatever the Peacemaker project is that they're going to probably just kill like... Maybe they'll probably just kill all the, the other members of the Suicide Squad off and eventually just introduce new characters. Uh, pray to God it'd be Lobo, but it probably won't be. Um, but yeah, so like, really that's just it. Like we, like the end credit scene is to showcase that uh, Peacemaker is lying in a hospital somewhere and there's going to be two of Amanda Waller's like uh, like people that she was working under are now going to be tied to this Peacemaker show. And good for them, right? They're going to get some uh, some, um, some more checks after this. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I can't wait for this movie to be over so I can go and do a show uh, to get more of them checks. Because I think that's all that matters to most of these people. Like, I can't see that they're like, yeah, this is a lot of fun, I'm sure, to put together. But it's just a bunch of action sequences. So... With that said, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, buddy. Bye, everybody.